What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to this live stream here on, well, we're starting on Facebook. We're going to move over to YouTube afterwards. Some exciting news in the world of rock music and the world of KISS. If you guys haven't got the official scoop, this actually just came out yesterday that KISS is planning an official biopic with Netflix. We have a powerhouse of producers and even a big director enlisted for this already. And to be honest, though, there's very little that's actually known about this biopic quite yet. I find it quite curious that they chose to announce this before there was a trailer, evidently before an actual contract was even signed. So very few details, but the details we do have are starting to look promising. So this is, I believe, the first article that broke on this. Netflix near deal on Kiss biopic shouted out loud. So I guess it has a name too. Joachim Ronning to direct the film with leaders Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons at center stage. So basically the idea for this uh, biopic at the moment is to go back in history, back to when Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley first met. I guess it was in Queens, New York, somewhere in New York, and really zero in on those elements. So that that's really what it says here. Um... We, so here's the, the little official information that we have about it. According to sources, Netflix is trying up, is tying up a deal after a bidding battle for a film that will be directed by Joachim Roning, the Norwegian filmmaker whose credits include Contiki, Maleficent, and Pirates of the Caribbean, which you can see here, actually. So this is, he did a Beatles movie, too. So this is a director that definitely has some skin in the game. Not his first time. And since he did this Beatles movie back in 2014, it looks like he has an interest in music. So that's a pretty good sign. Like, not that Maleficent's my favorite movie. I actually haven't even seen it, to be frank. But I do know that these are films with good reputations in terms of directing. Um, so a little bit more information. The pick will be a co-production of Mark Canton's Atmosphere Entertainment and Universal Music Group. Additional producers on this, I mean, there's a massive list. We have Universal Music Group... David Blackman, Jody Gerson, Doc McGee through McGee Entertainment, who's the manager of KISS, Gene Simmons, and Paul Stanley are listed as executive producers on this as well. So a, a big collab big goals for this. Now, the other interesting part before I move on about the article here is it says the project is on the fast track. The band is in the midst of its Europe tour, which has been slowed by the pandemic. There is every reason to imagine Netflix and Kiss will use the synergy of a big rock biopic to memorialize their final days on stage more than 50 years after Simmons and Stanley first got together. So that says to me, I don't think that this is going to be a one-off thing with Kiss and Netflix. Listen, knowing Paul Stanley... These guys are all about the bigger picture when it comes to business. They're not just going to go into a business endeavor and have it sort of just be a one-time thing and, and cash out. Knowing them, knowing their business mind, from what I've observed, they want to keep things going. They want to make it mutually beneficial for more than one party at more than one time, not just a one and done. Just like I would predict that they'll probably have more stuff coming with Dubai and the Emirates soon. I mean, the, the power they had to pull to even get that going, it wouldn't make sense if it was just a one and done. So I kind of feel the same about this, this biopic, which, which serves to be pretty interesting. Now, a couple things about the KISS biopic that I think that we, we need to be a little bit wary of here. The main thing is this, and a lot of people might not like to hear me say this, but it's just true. So I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. Um, it really was not a Gene and Paul version of the story. For example, I got into all of the KISS autobiographies from the four original members, be it audiobook and two of them I read. So I got the full picture from all four of their books. I loved Paul Stanley's book, probably the best in terms of content, but the biggest complaint that I had and the biggest thing I had missing was any admission of wrongdoing by Paul Stanley. I don't even think there was a moment in Paul Stanley's book where he said, you know what? I look back on that day and I really regret what I did, or I really wish I wouldn't have done it that way. You know, maybe in, in terms of certain Kiss songs or records, but in terms of taking responsibility for himself and, and his actions, very little, very little in Paul Stanley's book. So I don't want to see this biopic become life according to Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. What I want to see is reality. What I want to see is conversation about Peter Chris 
when he was selling drugs extracurricularly because he wasn't making enough money on the Dynasty Tour. I want the down and dirty shit that people don't, and not just Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons or the modern day Lennon and McCartney and they're so great and everyone's here to do their bidding, which well, that part's probably true, but I don't want that to be the whole movie. For me, I want this movie to be a full picture representation of Kiss. And that includes the session musicians, by the way. I was talking with a good friend of mine today, actually, and we were talking about this biopic. He was curious on my thoughts. I told him I was doing this tonight. And he said that he thinks that they should have some content about the session instrumentalists, the guys who came in and were not in the band but made the music happen. And I was thinking about it and I thought, Kiss have gold and platinum singles? where there's only one member of the band playing on the song. So you could look at other bands and potentially be like, yeah, the guys who came in to play for a session solo, who cares about those guys? Those guys don't mean anything, you know, like in a movie like the Motley Crue movie or whatever. When they would have that, it'd be very minimal. But with Kiss, uh, from the songwriting with Desmond Child and Bob Kulik with his guitar parts and whoever was playing on Shandy, I know it was Anton Figg, I mean, Paul Stanley was the only member of KISS that was playing on that at that time. So to not put some of the extra guys in the picture, I think would be an injustice to them, obviously. But mo most people don't probably care about that. Fair enough, I guess, because this, this is a movie about the stars. But I think it's an injustice to the stars because it wouldn't be really telling their story accurately. So... I'm curious to see what people think about that. I, I'd really like an even mix. I'd like to see Gene and Paul doing something that they later regret or later sit there and say, I don't know if we handled that properly. Because there are moments like that. And, you know, we can fix. You know, I, I maybe I won't right here, but there are things in the story of Kiss. I'm, let me tell you, I'm very curious to see what they're going to do with the Eric Carr stuff. Very curious to see what they're going to do. Again, there's moments in KISS's history when, if you don't know, I, I doubt you're watching this if you don't know, when KISS lost their drummer, Eric Carr, of cancer, it wasn't a situation that all parties really felt good about um, people outside of the band that knew them and such. It's things like that, I'm very curious. Vinnie Vincent is another one. How are they going to tackle Vinnie Vincent? Is somebody going to play Vinnie Vincent? Is Vinnie Vincent not going to exist in the biopic? These are the things that I want to know. Mark St. John, right? We could go all night. Who's going to be in the film? Who are they going to acknowledge? There's really no way to know. Bill Coin. I could go all night, like I said. I mean, strange happenings, strange goings on. If you read those Kiss books, if you read about things that happened, about the way things were, a lot of weird stuff. A lot of very strange stuff. So, point being, I'm curious to see what they're going to mix of it. Now, there's not much to talk about yet, but I put together a draft, and this fuck this cracks me up to no end. Hopefully, hopefully, someone will get some enjoyment out of this. I put together who I think should play each original Kiss member in this movie. So, hear me out. <laughs> That's the first thing I'm going to say. Hear me out, but. After this, I have a hunch I may end up becoming a Hollywood casting director because this is just too good. So check this out. Peter Chris needs to be played by Johnny Depp. Hear me out. Hear me out. Look at their eyes. Look at those eyes. Is that not the same guy? I thought it was. No, really. I mean, this is flawless casting right here. Think about it. Johnny Depp. Not a stranger to a down and dirty role. You talk about Peter Chris, dirty living. You talk about all that stuff. Look at the movie Blow. I'm not trying to say anything about Peter Chris. Look at the movie Blow. Look at the movie Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Look at the beautiful performances Johnny Depp has captured. Donnie Brasco. These are all characters that fall in line with Peter Chris, especially John, uh, Donnie Brasco, the uh, Bronx, Brooklyn. I, I don't know. I'm not from New York. The New York element to it, the street kid vibe. I mean, we got to remember, Peter Chris was a member before he was a drummer. Peter Chris used to show up to rumbles and beat the fuck out of people with his crew because he was a street kid from New York City. So that's my pick for Peter Chris. 
I hope people get a kick out of this. So who's going to play Gene Simmons? Probably the question most people want to know. Again, I'm taking a leap of faith with you guys and showing you guys my thoughts. Okay, come on. You know you see it. You know you see it. Robert Downey Jr. as Gene Simmons. Now, again, look at the eyes. And pay attention. Think if he was looking into the camera and sticking his tongue out. He's got the charisma, the larger-than-life attitude. Motherfucker, that's the real Iron Man. I think there's two guys with the confidence... There's only two guys with the confidence of these two guys, and we're looking at them. Simmons and Iron Man. I mean, it really doesn't get any bigger than that. Uh, so that's really, that's my pick, to be quite honest, for Gene Simmons. And I, again, leave a comment. I want to know who you guys think would be good for this, because I think this is hilarious. And again, they got to have a big budget, because I'm giving them an all-star cast here, but I think it might be worth it. Ace Fraley. Who's going to play Ace? Well... I took into account always the eyes, but the facial structure. Ace, and I love Ace, he's probably my favorite, but he hasn't aged as gracefully maybe as the others, but he also hasn't got work done like the others. Paul and Gene have publicly, I don't know about Paul, Gene has publicly got work done. Uh, Sean Penn as Ace Fraley. Come on. Don't tell me you don't see it. Don't tell me you can't see it. <laughs> um, you know, I think Sean Penn's from New York. Um, but again, you got to get someone for that role who can really sort of be in, in the down and dirty category. Uh, so that's what I think Sean Penn would provide. Just, just a disclaimer for anybody who's just tuning in. This is not the official cast list of the film. Uh, I'm not misleading anyone. I don't want to hear people saying your show that and and uh, you know anything like that. This is not the official cast list for the Kiss biopic. These are just the people that I think would be fantastically cast in the movie. Now the better question is who is going to play Paul Stanley? Well, I want you guys to decide who's going to play Paul. Um, I have a little hunch about some people, but I'm not quite sure. What I want to do is see what you guys think. So leave me a comment. If you're watching this on the Facebook live stream, click the subscribe uh, link in the description above. I do new content multiple times every single week, talking about all the topics you want to hear about, all the music and entertainment you guys want to hear about. So sauce me that subscribe. I would appreciate it. And let me know who's going to be Paul Stanley in the Kiss biopic. And I look forward to talking about this again because this is just the tip of the iceberg for this. I think there was another Kiss movie that was supposed to happen a few years back and it just didn't happen. So hopefully this one happens. I think it will with the Netflix stamp on it. And until then, we're just going to have to wait and see. So hopefully my all-star cast get app gets approved. Netflix, if you're watching, you know where to find me. And we'll catch up with you guys soon. Big love.